As I mentioned, this is Starbuck, and uh, Starbuck's an Oregon Mustang. He's a conservative Oregonian, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was good. Uh, he, he's, he's a very responsive horse. When I started training him, uh, I just was so, so surprised at, at kind of his, uh, his personality and, and uh, we got this little thing, you notice he dropped his head, when, and so, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, whatever it is, uh, just kind of, hey, this is my thing, my, yeah. Uh, He's the star of the show. All right, as we, as we begin uh, the, the, the sermon part, uh, last time, last Cowboy Church, and, and I, I, I offended somebody, and they came up and talked to me, and I, and I felt bad. Uh, I didn't feel bad about, about what I said, I just felt, I, you know, I never like to offend people. I sometimes hear preachers say, well, if I offend you, I don't care. I, I always do, but if I offend you, it probably isn't going to change what I believe or what I say. So it was only, only a couple of people. and. Uh, uh, and it was, I, I alluded to politics. I made, uh, so, you, see, Marv, you, you, you weren't here last time, were you? Because it, it was a Canada, it was a Canada joke, really. And I, I didn't, you know, I didn't mention any names. All I said was, so I'm probably gonna offend somebody again. <laughs> all, all I said was, if, if we could take our president and change trade with your prime minister, for, you know, six months or so. I don't think they would do a better job in either place, but it would take them six months to figure out how to destroy another country. So that was, uh, so that was my, my joke. Uh, didn't mention any names. I don't even, I don't even know who I was talking about. Okay. <laughs> We, we need to we need to pray we need to pray again okay all right god i pray that you would minister to us today i pray i thank you god for every person that's here every life represented i pray that you would continue to minister to those who who are, are local and pray you give just grace and traveling mercy and safety to those who are going to be heading back to a cooler climate and God, we just thank you for what you desire to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what, uh, what I want to talk about this morning is, is when, when God looks for a partner. And, and God really wants to partner with, with all of us. He, he's, uh, uh, and, and we talk about with horses, we'll talk about horses um, and, and it being a partnership. Uh, Starbuck and I really are, in, in many respects, we partner on, on uh, it's really two or more uh, engaged in the same activity or having the same goal. He's kind of, kind of feisty today. <clears throat> uh, so uh, two or more people engaged in the same goal, same activity. Uh, so, so we partnered together to accomplish the same goal. I'll, I'll give you an example. If, uh, if you're, if you're a, a, a roper, let's say team roper, let's say a calf roper, uh, it doesn't really matter which one, but what you're wanting to do, you're wanting that horse to get you to right where you need to be so that you can make your, your throw. So the horse is really, really getting you to the perfect spot. So that's the partnership. But you'll practice over and over again the horse getting you to the right spot. Uh, roundup, we, we would do, first roundup I went on, I think I was 12, and it was up in the, in the mountains, uh, pretty rugged country. Uh, you guys back east, you'll have how many cows per acre? Here in Arizona, it's how many acres per cow. And so it, it's pretty remote, so we're, we'll start up, or like sun up and get up in the mountains and start bringing the smaller groups back to the main herd. 
And so you're partnering. I, I couldn't walk up there, hike up there, and, and, and find the cattle, but so you get a horse, and, and horse locks in, and you keep driving those cattle back to the main herd. Uh, a, a cutting horse, I love to see cutting horses work. It's just like yeah. this rhythm. And, and, and what, what they're doing is the, the rider, if you'll notice, the, the rider at that point is, is just doing minimal, minimal steering. Once they identify, this is the one that doesn't get back away from us, that horse is locked in, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so it really is a partnership, but it's not an equal partnership. I don't ever go out in the pen and say, Starbuck, what do you think? What do you want to do today? <laughs> say, okay, As a matter of fact, this morning when I went out, he, and just about any time, he'll look at me, he'll walk over to the, to the if, if he's in the back pasture, walk to the back and say, there are other ones here, they can go, they want to go, they want to be near you, I'm, I'm fine, and I say, come here, and so he'll come over and, and, and he's fine. Um, but uh, what, what, what I don't do is say, I don't know, Starbuck, I, you know, I want to be sure you're comfortable, I want you to be happy, and, and, and uh, uh, I'll just say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And, and we'll, we'll start doing it. So uh, it, it, it's, it's easy to say me and God are partners. It's harder to walk out because God is a senior partner and I don't like that. I want God to check with me and say, Randy, here's what I think I'm gonna do. I wonder if you'd sign off on it. You know, it's a 50-50 deal. God just says, okay, here's the deal. You can do what I want, or your life can really be miserable. Uh, and and I know that because I have I have not done what he what he wants. Um, God is looking for people to partner with Him to literally change the world. When when Jesus selected disciples, um, he, he didn't select people who he, he thought were really qualified with world standards. He selected people who were doing something, and some of them were the least qualified, I would think, to, they, they wouldn't make it on the board of any of our churches. Uh, I mean, you know, you can see somebody says, hey, see that guy, uh, Peter, out there fishing? I think he'd be a good church member. You go, you've got to be kidding. The guy's impulsive, impetuous. He just, he's, no, nah, he's got to be somebody else. Judas over there, man, there's the guy. Let's put him on the board immediately. That's anyway. Um, so, so we're called to be salt in a world that's decaying and light in a world that's filled with darkness. And it's not always easy to do. And I don't know how to be salt or light, but I know that Jesus not only knows, but he is salt and light. Mm -hmm. And so the more I can say, okay, God, you're in charge of this. Every once in a while, Libby will get in a weird mood where she'll say something like, Randy, it's not all about you. <laughs> it's, I have no idea where that comes from. Uh, I think if we were to listen to God, we would occasionally hear that still small voice. You know, Randy, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. So it's, it, it's taking a stand when it's unpopular. We, we live in a world where wrong is considered right and right is considered wrong. We, and, and this is where I, I, I may offend you, and I, that's not my, my point, but we live in a world where it's increasingly where, you know, um, you need to pretend that you don't know the difference between males and females. I, I just can't pretend, I can't play that game, because I, I took biology. I didn't do real well, but I took enough of it I actually took genetics in college. So I think, well, there's some issues with that. But you need to play the game. Uh, there's a scripture in, in Matthew where, where the, they, they said, we, we played the flute for you and you didn't dance. We sang dirges like funeral songs for you and you didn't weep. So it was really a conflict. What, what that scripture really is saying is we... Every time we do this, we want you to have a corresponding action to that and go along with us. And it says you're, you're at odds with the culture. And when we, when, when we have this action, we want this response. Um, last week, 
they had uh, the day of transgender visibility in Washington. I thought, man, I think we've had like three years of, of the visibility. Uh, and but but everybody's supposed to celebrate. So so I'm, I'm what I'm saying is not that those things become the issue, but those are increasingly becoming the pressure on culture to conform to culture. And we we, we played this song. You need to do this uh, in our personal lives. We we want to be the managing partner. So. Uh, so you can take a sigh of relief. I think I'm off the politics. Who, who knows? I may get back on. But um, God is not looking for partners who have learned how to play a game and how to act. He's looking for people who will say, this is what is right. This is what is wrong. This is what the Bible says. This is what it, what it doesn't. Um, here's what the psalmist said in Psalms 50:21. He said, and he listened a number of things in Psalms 50. He said, these things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. I, I, I think what this horse always wants me to do, he, this horse always wants to train me. It, you, you do, I know. Uh, he always wants... He, he, wants, he wants me to do things his way. And, uh, and if, if, I, if, if I allow him to do stuff, he'll say, well, you must be just like me. I believe one of the greatest challenges is in, in the church today and I'm really, is we think God is like us. However I feel must be how God feels. We, we, we think God is like us and if we do, we will never change. Here's what, here's what God says. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. Are the heavens is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So this horse, um, he, he's, he's really a great horse for cowboy church. How many of this is your first time to come into cowboy church? So um, great to have everybody here. This horse, he just he's been in, in some huge environments of uh, country thunders one they'll have like what 35 40 thousand people i think last year at country thunder so you're in kind of a big big thing we do the the cowboy church and uh, uh out there as well um he's been in huge auditoriums cameras lights coming on stage you know um and uh he's he's just a, a phenomenal horse but he he's come to the point where he goes i have no idea why all I know is this is what you're asking me to do. I think he rolls his eyes. I, he, they're, they're right there where I can't see. He's on stage going, Gah, this guy. <clears throat> so, but, but, but what he will do, he will stand here. You guys have all seen, I didn't bring any, any uh, obstacles out. He will stand here, and if my, if my foot just comes in a little bit right here, he'll say, okay, you, 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 you want my whole body to go, to go this way. And then he'll just stand there, and he'll wait for me to tell him something else. I, I wish I was that way with God. Man, I, you know, I go, God, what's that pressure? What's that pressure? Uh, I, don't, I don't like that or whatever. I don't really say that, but I think it. <laughs> and I'm convinced God does not know what I think. <clears throat> okay, uh, that's not true, he knows what I, Okay. So what I look for in a horse is the first thing is willingness. Willing. Isaiah says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Willingness. Uh, my, my dad used to say, you can, you, you know, he, he would pick horses by, he said that horse has kind eyes. When I was selecting out horses for the wild horse uh, program here in Florence, uh, I would get out in the pen a lot of times, early morning, and the horses would start coming around. Some of them are curious, and I could see their eyes. Eyes tell you a lot. I don't want that horse that's standing off in the corner snorting and you can see the white of his eyes. I want the horse coming in kind of closed, got kind eyes, looks at you, says, I don't, know, I don't necessarily want you to touch me, but I'm curious about you. And, and you can tell a lot with the, with the eyes. Eyes, somebody said, are the window of the soul. That's people and horses. Uh, kind eyes. Willingness begins in attitude. So eyes will say a lot about attitude. <clears throat> Jim, what, what year did you adopt your horse out of the program? 2013. 2013. So well, early on in the program, and uh, you know, and, and that's a, a great example of a horse, just a kind-eyed, nice, willing horse, and and uh, 
just says, okay, let's, we, 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 I'll figure this out and, and, and I, I want to be part of, of uh, uh, helping. We, we trained, what, eight horses for the Yukon, the outfitters in the Yukon territory, and, uh, and they were older horses. And uh, we'd, we'd pick out horses that said, okay, th this horse over here may be more of a performance horse, but what we want are horses that are going to carry a pack and, and, and go through country and be kind. And, and, uh, and so we look for that, that willingness. Uh, Isaiah uh, 119, it said, if you're willing and obedient, lead the good of the land. Uh, Philippians 2.13 says this, for it is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So when I train a horse, I'm not trying to break its will. I don't throw it to the ground and, uh, and try to break its will. What I try to do is provide the horse an opportunity to willingly do what I'm asking it to do. It's a difference, it takes a little bit more time. Um, Chris, I'm picking on people now, and it's Chris, on one of the documentaries early on, uh, you said, we're, we're not breaking horses, we're, we're changing how they think or something. It was, it was really a great statement. On, it was one of, the, one of the early documentaries. Chris was in the program in, in 2012 and 13. If you have any problem with your horse, you can probably break, blame Chris now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> we're... Uh, we're, we're generous, we're, we're working with the mind, and, and, and that is really what, what God starts doing, is he, he starts getting us where, so we to be willing to do this, um, and sometimes it takes a while. Moses on the back side of the desert reached a point where he's willing. Uh, if, if you look at some of the, the great movements, uh, Gideon, he wasn't like right off the bat willing, David wasn't. Uh, over and over again, God is saying, would you get to a place where you're willing and then life radically, radically changes. He gets uh, Peter out on a boat and Jesus comes walking. The, the, the storm is raging and Peter uh, sees Jesus walking by and goes, ah, this, okay, this is too weird. I don't think, you know, that uh, Jesus said, uh, Peter, I just wonder, you know, when you're out there, at some point, just, just jump out and try walking on the water. But he sees Jesus walk on the water, and suddenly there's a willingness to do what somebody else is able to do that defies logic, and he steps out. I, and, and he sank. He, he walked. So he walked. Peter started walking on the water and saw the waves and the wind and started sinking and said, Lord, help me. But if you read that in your Bible, it doesn't say, the day Peter sank. <laughs> Peter walked on the water. All you grandparents... You'll have these little videos of your grandchild taking the first few steps, and then they fall. Your, your son or daughter doesn't send you and say, Hey, uh, look at this video of the baby falling. <laughs> took, took two steps, that's pretty awesome. You're going, wow, we're going to replay that over and over again. I think God has a little video up there that says, you know, you say, man, I didn't get it just right. God says, yeah, but man, you took a couple of steps. I'm really proud of you. I think we forget that because it's the willingness to step out, and, and, uh, uh, and, and it changes things uh, radically. Attitude is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Optimism is a choice. Kindness is a choice. Giving is a choice. Respect is a choice. Whatever choice you make, choose wisely. Because whatever you, choice you make chooses you. It chooses the path you're on. So the second thing is determination. Um, what I look for in a horse is I want a horse that's determined. Say, so, okay, I, I, I think you want me to do this, and, and, and they'll try. Sometimes he'll try to do things, so they no, I'm not that, that's not what I'm asking you to do. But he'll step out and, and, and do something. I think I shared this maybe a, a, a couple of months ago. If I did, it'll be a little redundant. But I, I, was, I had this mare, and I had rode back into the, into the hills for um, like two or three days, just me and this horse had a, a bedroll, had saddlebags, had some feed, and uh, so we're coming back in. It was rugged, rugged country, steep canyons, and you had to hit it just right. And coming back in, uh, I, I got off the, uh, the trail was almost non-noticeable, but so I just got on the wrong ridge and uh, get down. 
the wrong ridge and it, it goes down pretty steep and it's shale. Uh, so I, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to go clear back up and hit the right ridge. And so I, I turned her nose around to look down to see how, how far it was and she thought I meant step off. <laughs> and she stepped off, tucked her rear, and slid all the way to the bottom, got to the bottom, looked back at me and said, okay, I think we got that, and we went on. <laughs> so, so, to me, that, that is that determination. Now, it doesn't look easy, but for a wild horse, they go, ah, I've done stuff like this before. Not with an idiot on my back, but I've done stuff like this before. We can make it down there. Uh, and so, so I, I, I think, you know, when, when God is looking for partners, he's looking for somebody who's willing and who's just determined to, to, to do what they can to accomplish whatever it is that, uh, that God wants them to accomplish. Calvin Coolidge said this, Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of, full of educated derelicts. I like that. Um, I don't know why. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Uh, determination in the face of of obstacles, determination in the face of difficult choices. A, a difficult time can be more readily endured if we retain the conviction that our existence holds a purpose, a cause. There's some reason. Uh, God is looking for people who are determined to make a change in the world. You'll, you'll never make a change in the world until you reach the point where you're determined to make a change in yourself. It, it doesn't work that way. The first thing is I've got to determine to make a change in me. Hebrews 12, 1. He says, uh, one of the key words in, in throughout the book of Hebrews is this, let us, let us. And there are really two, if you read through the book of Hebrews, the word better occurs over and over. We have better promises, better over and over, better sacrifice. Um, but, and, and let us. He said, because of this, then let us do this. So it's really a book of action. And in, in Hebrews 12, 1, it, in, in chapter 11, he talks about all these heroes of faith. In 12, he says, um, seeing we are compassed about with such a great a cloud of witnesses, let us uh, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus. So he said, then we're, let us do something. Uh, and and I, I think that's one of the, one of the great challenges, my, my personality, I, I don't just wade into conflict, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't like battles, but what I'm realizing more and more is I may not like battles, and it's not looking for a battle, but you've got to be willing to take a stand. So the, the last thing is, so, so it's willingness, determination, and dependable. Uh, there are probably a, a bunch more. Uh, preachers like to have it in, in, in three points. We don't like to have three points, a poem, and a prayer. So I don't have the poem. But uh, I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I pastored for, uh, pastored or pestered, I, anyway, I pa pastored for a, a number of years, and I, I, I went in the ministry when I was 22 years old, and that lasted about six months, because, and I'm still this way, if, if behind the scenes needs to be pretty close to what it is up front, so if behind the scenes, if it's all about money, you're going to lose me. If you're, if we're, uh, we'd get in professional fundraisers and they would work the crowd. We had uh, one of the churches uh, had diamond drop Sunday to get people's diamond jewelry, had golden silver lining Sunday to get silver and golden oldie to get. I, I said, I'm, I'm done. And, uh, and it took me years to get back in the ministry and I realized that all people weren't that way. And uh, most, pre most pastors are, are just solid, want to do something for God. But that was my first big experience. I thought, man, I, I, I can't stand this thing of working crowds and trying to get money and the big egos. And, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm still that way. But it, it, didn't, it, it took God a while to, 
to get me in a headlock and say, yeah, you know, you haven't got your act all together e either, which was a shock to me. Uh, <laughs> so, so dependable is, is the last one. Um, there's this video, I, I, and you may have seen it. It's this horse, I think it's in Mexico. This guy has this horse, and the horse doesn't want to be ridden. And so every, they'll get it saddled up, and every time they get on the horse, it will drop down and play dead. And you're, it, 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 you can Google that, horse that plays dead. And this horse, you know, they've got a few. They, they put somebody else on it, it just dropped down, play dead. Close its eyes and kind of look around a little bit, and then close its eyes again. It's like, uh, and I thought, now, now that's funny, unless you're needing to ride the horse. <laughs> then it's not. And I think pretty much uh, the, the church is full of people who when God asks us to do something, we say, I think I'm gonna play dead. Uh, anyway, just, when things get tough, I need a dependable horse. So I, I've had Starbuck and up in the mountains, I've had him in deep snow, had him in the desert, had him, had him he's ridden the, ridden the, the, the border uh, with law enforcement. Uh, we, we trained a lot for the border patrol and, and Bureau of Land Management has property down there. So we've, we've ridden uh, through desert and mountains and, and all kinds of things, cross rivers. And uh, he's just one of those horses. If I ask him to do something, he'll, he'll figure it out and say, okay, let, 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 let's do it. Uh, when things get tough, I need a, I need a dependable horse. Uh, when, uh, here's what, I, I, I think sometimes we, we want, uh, one of the things I love about Cowboy Church is it just, it, you don't, I've never had one person We've been doing this for 10 years, more than 10 years probably. Uh, never had one person say, Pastor, the air conditioning just wasn't up to my standard. <laughs> the, the seat was not what I consider to be adequate for church. The horse pooped. <laughs> just not very godly. Never. You know, it just kind of levels the playing field, doesn't it? It's just, you know, just other, other horses, not you, um, this time. So, but, but one of the things, you know, we, we, we think we want, and I don't think we really do, and I'm getting ready to uh, do a, a start a podcast. I'll, if you guys, uh, was, I've had this producer wanting me to start a podcast for a, a number of years, and so I said, I'll tell you what, well, we'll do a podcast. I don't want to do another Cowboy Church, but we're going to do a podcast geared for men. I'll probably get more positive comments from women uh, that, that watch it but, uh, or listen to it. So, so we're getting ready to, to start airing, airing that. But, but the, the reason I mention that is because I think one of the reasons the church loses men is we're trying to make a safe place. Or the church thinks they need to make a safe place. Men aren't looking for a safe place. Now, by, by, uh, I, I don't think the church should be a safe place. By that, I don't. I, I think any time there's 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 manipulation and, and predators and 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 abuse, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about the church should be a place where we actually go to war, where we actually have an enemy to fight, and we're determined to fight the enemy that's out there to fight. It it, it is not something that needs to be safe and secure, and we just kind of walk in and and uh, have all these little little accolades and one-liners and the, the past said, you know, no, no, matter, no matter what you are, Jesus loves you just like you are. Yeah. So whatever. Okay. That's my... He didn't... I'm going to have to really edit these videos this time. So... I go, good grief. I, I, you know, there, there's something about life that there are things worth fighting for. I don't think you need to be out trying to pick a fight all the time, but you need to be able to take a stand. Um, I, I, I know in, in, in law enforcement, uh, man, you know, when, 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 things, when things fall apart, you can't say, well, you know, I just, I don't think I want to take a stand. You're, you're, in, you're in, the, in, in the middle of it. Here, so here's, here's the Apostle Paul uh, talking about some of the things in his life. So we, we look at, so this is one of the leaders of the church, writing to the church of Corinth. He said, I've worked hard 
I've been put in prison for the gospel. I've been flogged. I've been exposed to death again and again five times. I received 39 lashes from the Jews. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones and left for dead. Three times shipwrecked. I was adrift in the ocean and open the sea, constantly on the move. Danger from rivers. Danger from bandits. Danger from my fellow Jews. Danger from fellow Gentiles. Danger in the city, danger in the country, danger at sea, and danger from false believers. Labored, toiled, gone without sleep, hunger, thirst, cold, naked. <coughs> he says, here's the sign-up form if you want to join. <laughs> he says, besides this, I face daily the pressure of me worrying about the church. That's somewhere up there. I think that's pretty amazing. He, he, he didn't say, you know, this is, this is really, really a pretty easy life. You accept Jesus, everything goes great. He said, you accept Jesus, you're probably going to find yourself in the middle of a battle, but it's a battle worth fighting. You'll find yourself in the middle of a war, but it's a war worth winning. When, when Jesus is, is baptized in the Jordan River, the Bible says the Holy Spirit descends, God speaks, this is my beloved son, <clears throat> The next thing that happens it says, and the spirit led him in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. It's not a, he didn't say you're on a safe place. He goes, now, now we're going to start fighting the enemy. It never has been uh, safe in that sense. You think, well, uh, surely it started out safe. There's that garden of Eden. That's pretty safe. Yeah, but then there's that serpent. It, it, it seems like there, there's always something that God is saying there's a battle to fight. We are built for battle, not for sitting back and thinking that it's all about us and saying, you know what, I, 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 I really uh, have decided that uh, I'm, I'm now just good enough like I am. I don't need to change. One of the battles is internal. We say, God, I need to, there's a battle to fight. So... <clears throat> I thought I'd give this really hard message right before we end up. So then four months later, he goes, I, th I can't remember if you said anything mean or not. So you'll come back. Uh, not really. Uh, my, my, my point is that I, I, I am convinced that as a worldwide, uh, we're, we're in tough times. And any time that I, have, I decide, well, I just have a generic religion, or the Bible probably isn't true, or some of the Bible's true, some of it isn't. We're, we're on a slippery slope, and uh, at some point we need to say, God, I don't know why you said that, but let me really look at it because it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out the whys. And, I, and, and the, the Bible says this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Work out your own salvation. And it's, it's one of those things where you say, God, I'm in a battle, and give me the strength to fight the, the battle I need to fight. Sometimes we end up fighting all the battles we don't need to fight. But uh, I, I would encourage you, here's what the Bible, the, the, the battle begins with coming before God and say, God, I... For him, Randy, could you take over the reins of my life and help me to figure out what you want me to do? It's, it's, it's that simple with God. God, can you take over the reins of my life? I don't have this thing figured out. Uh, left to myself, I'm going to mess up probably anything. But God, would you take the reins of my life? <clears throat> I began thinking through this. I just decided to do this thing where I'm going to um, most days I'm going to fast for, for whatever, uh, 18 hours or whatever. Then, so, uh, and, and I started looking at what would it be like, what would a day be like, I'm not suggesting you do this, this is, you know, for me, what would a day be like if I got up in the morning and said, God, I want to act today like there's no grace. At the end of the day, I will thank you that there is. But I don't want to start my day saying I can do whatever I want because of grace. I want, so that's just me kind of working out my own salvation. But, it, but it's, it's coming to that point where, where you say, God, I, I need to 
work on this and allow you to get in the middle of it. And what happens is this, this amazing, incredible life that, that, that we couldn't imagine. We really couldn't. And God starts putting things together. This horse has an amazing life. He, he's uh, 15, probably wouldn't still be alive if he was out in the wild. Uh, he's got his diet. Uh, he can do fun things. What he, he'll do, we'll do, we'll do a spin. There's a spin. We're going to do one more time around. So if you're filming this, then you can speed it up on like really high. Uh, and you'll go, wow, that guy's... <laughs> okay, that was just... You did good on that spin, buddy. But, uh, so, all right. Let's pray. God, I, I thank you for all that you have done and all you're doing in and through us. And God, I, I, I pray that you would help us to not, not get caught up on all the things that we're told we need to think, but get caught up on what we know that you tell us to do and think. And God, we do thank you for grace every day. Thank you that your mercy is new every morning. God, I thank you that it, that it begins with us simply coming before you and saying, Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you take over the reins of my life? God, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe, God, that you raised him from the dead. And you say, if I confess that with my mouth, that I'm your child. That's the beginning point, and you begin taking over the reins. God, would you help me to do that and live for you? God, I, I, I pray right now for, for all those here that will be traveling. Uh, God, I, I, I pray for those who would just honestly say, there, there's some real battles and struggles in their life. Maybe here, maybe personally, maybe back home, kids and grandkids and, and health issues. God, I pray that, that we would just invite you into the middle of it all and ask you to do what we can't do. And God, I, I pray for every, every person needs healing physically. Pray for every person who needs you to get in the middle of their of their family situation, circumstances, and and the, the the devastation. And God, we we pray that you would do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.